Hi everyone and welcome to your mystery reading. Thank you so much for clicking on the video, for joining me today. I hope this reading finds you well. So as you may know already, the mystery reading will find you whenever you need to hear the message in it. So yeah, um, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your beautiful comments since uh, I've been back on YouTube daily. I'm very, very excited to um, just be back, you know. I paused and slowed down for the last two months and it, it was good. I, I could focus on different projects, but I really missed you too. Um, so I'm very happy to be back. And um, yeah, <laughs> a lot of new things are coming up. I can't wait to share with you guys. And for now, um, yeah, enjoy this mystery reading. Let's see, what is the general energy in the present moment? What wants to come through for the mystery reading? Okay, okay, let's see what we have here. Six of Cups. What a gentle... Um, just fun energy. I'm so happy. I think like we've had a lot of challenging readings uh, with the mystery. It, it was it was a lot. And now that I'm seeing the Six of Cups, it's like, wow, how gentle, how soft. It feels good. You know, Six of Cups really invites us to, to honor a part of ourselves to heal something. It's like a gentle invitation to maybe address something that has been making us emotional. It could be about so many things. I feel like it could talk sometimes about reconciliation, of course, but uh, it's a personal one. You know, since this is number six, very connected to the lover's card, I always think about self-love first. You, you guys know me already. Um, this is like a big focus in my tarot practice to really look at ourselves first instead of giving our power away. You know, it's easy when we see a card like this or a lover's card to say, wow, wow, okay, it's about another person. And actually the tarot is a reflection of you. The tarot is a mirror, kind of a mirror to the soul. So what part of yourself have you been healing? What are the things that you are starting to feel ready to address, to look at, to maybe share with others? Um, and by doing so, by celebrating and honoring parts of yourself, you're definitely making space for others to love you, to see you in a way that feels healthy and balanced. I like that. I'm just, uh, I can't stop smiling seeing the Six of Cups. Again, what a gentle touch like a, a soft energy there's just something so nurturing like uh, a big comfortable blanket wrapping you like hey this is okay you can share part of yourself you can finally see things differently you can experience feel things differently you know this is cups so we're talking about feelings we're talking about water I love it, okay? So I'm going to start picking cards because, you know me, I could talk for hours about one card. It's just who I am. So let's go. Let's see. <laughs> Magician wants to come through. The devil wants to come through. Okay, that's interesting. Very interesting. Let's honor that. Let's honor that. Um, Magician and the devil card, two major arcana cards, um, which really talks about control in a way, the things that we have control over and also the things that sometimes control us. So finding this sweet balance in between. I am aware of what sometimes can control me. You know, it could be addiction, it could be codependency. Um, I love the devil card. It's one of my favorite cards. I'm personally in a devil card year, so it's just... It's a very cool energy. 
But again, here there's this fine line between what we have control over and what controls us. So with the Six of Cups, yeah, it could be definitely something that you are trying to heal right now, something that you're trying to address. Like what energy or people or situation or my addictions, my, my patterns, behavior, what have been controlling me? What feels good and what doesn't feel good anymore, which I think it's going to be, this is going to be a big theme, uh, especially now that we are entering Venus retrograde and the sign of Leo. There's just a lot about us, how we love ourselves, how we treat ourselves, how we sometimes get bound to relationships or stories, behavior, and with the magician, this card says you have more control than you know. You actually have all the tools right now in this moment to change your destiny, to create new beginnings, to plant the seeds. You know, magician is like such a cool card because um, it's really reflecting how we're the ones in control. Which is something I say all the time. When I do personal reading, I, I, I try to always start with that. You're the one in control, not me, not the tarot, not the people you're watching online and listening to. You, you have control. So with the magician, there's action that's being taken. Also with the devil card, which is connecting to Capricorn energy. You have been working hard and you know you're going to have to work hard still to access this, this very soft, uh, loving place. That you're gonna have to work very hard still to get past challenges and um, get to know yourself better and get more comfortable. I feel like there is just so much, again, coming through with those two major cards. Um, but yeah, that fine line between what we have control over and what has been controlling us, have been controlling us. Um, and I always repeat myself a lot, guys. I know it. And if I repeat something, it's because, you know, it's important. There might be something there. Let's see what we have. The strength card. Are you serious? We have three major cards in that first row. I've noticed recently in all the readings I do, there's so many major cards and I know that it, it's a big confirmation for me personally that there's a lot coming. For all of us collectively, there is this switch, this shift of energy. The Magician and the Strength card are very connected because in the traditional version of the tarot, they have the beautiful infinity loop on it, which you know I'm obsessed with co-creating with spirit, this never-ending connection that we have with the universe, our guides, um, sometimes with our inner child, also sometimes with other people. With the strength card, we're really looking at the things that we don't necessarily love about ourselves, the things that we don't like about our behaviors, um, and wanting to change that, having the strength to address certain things and to maybe transform, you know? It takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of love for ourselves and for other people to want to change. Just to admit like, okay, there are some things that I could improve. It doesn't mean that you need to change. You're amazing the way you are, but wanting to improve, wanting to... Um, not ignore things, I think is a big, big uh, theme here. You know, Leo is connected to the heart space. It's connected to the sun. Um, so clarity, honesty, and being, again, strong enough, courageous enough to say, you know what? I've been holding on to things from the past. I've been, in certain moments, not treating myself so well. Instead of judging myself for that, instead of um, being mean to myself and talking down, you know, to myself, 
can I show myself a little bit more love? You know, and this is all connected to how we are transforming, transforming the way that we care for ourselves, care for our inner child, and also for other people, our relationship. So, yeah, a big energy we have. To <laughs> I don't even have the time to, to shuffle the cards and all the major are coming through. It's, it's just, it's again, so many major cards confirming that we're going through a massive, massive shift as a collective. So Emperor is here. Emperor is connected to the sign of Aries. So Aries is the baby of the Zodiac. You know, this card is about taking up space in the world. Look at me. I am here. I deserve to take up space. I want to be seen. Which, with the moon card at the heart of this reading, you know, at the, at the center energy, there's this... There's this uh, up and down around that. Some days you want to take up space. Some days you feel like your ideas are so good. You want to be seen. You want to be heard. And then on other days, you're like, what is this? Why am I doing this? What is the purpose? I cannot understand. There's so many things about myself I don't understand. There's so many things in my relationship I don't understand. And the moon is asking us to just be. The moon is asking us to surrender to uncertainty. Um, and there's something about emotions, you know, especially with the Six of Cups as the general energy and the moon being at the center here. I always connect the two in my readings. It's like our emotions, our mood is constantly changing and i feel that is as a collective you know we are navigating this world we all collectively have been through so much in the past three four years um it's hard to live in the unknown and this is a huge theme in all my readings because the tarot really reflects how life is unpredictable and how we don't really have control. So there's something here about bringing love into a situation, being more kind to yourself when you are experiencing a lot of ups and downs with your mood. Um, your mood. Moon, yeah. It could be your moon, your mood. <laughs> Just navigating that with more love, with more softness and kindness. Um Sometimes it's not easy to do that, especially if there's other people, you know, that either bring you down or um, just notice your mood change. Maybe some people are not comfortable with how you express yourself, how you show up in the world. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. There is a lot of layers to that energy. But the emperor really says you're allowed to take up space. You're allowed to be moody. You're allowed to be pissed. You're allowed to want to kick and scream as long as your intentions are good. You know, as long as you're not trying to hurt other people and you're aware of when you are hurting yourself. So again, the theme of courage is coming up a lot um, here with the strength card, the emperor. It takes so much courage to be seen to show up in the world and say, okay, I'm not perfect. This is how I am. I'm just a human like you trying to navigate. So can we grow together? Can we support each other instead of uh, critiquing each other and just, how can I say that in English? Um, like pinning people against each other. I don't really know how to say that, but I've noticed that recently, especially in, in the tarot community, and I've talked about that before, um, and the fabulous uh, Bennett Bellwell made a video on that, which in my opinion, she's a tarot legend. I absolutely love her. And she talked about 
how there was this TikTok YouTuber that made a video on like 10 ways to spot a fake tarot reader. And like, it really, it really hurt me in the moment um, because I feel like a spiritual community, a soul family is all about lifting each other up. And not pointing fingers and not trying to say that person is fake because they do tarot in a certain way. Um, so being careful also, because here there's this feeling that I'm sensing of judge judgment. You know, you are aware of your mood. You are aware of sometimes, you know, again, the things that control you, the things that are more difficult for you to admit or to work with. And then there's like other people sometimes pointing fingers and you know kind of adding frustration adding stress instead of lifting uh you up so there's something here because i have this story coming through that i have forgotten about you know in the past couple days because i was like this is so bad it's so bad that terror readers um point fingers and I'm, I'm just very against that because there's not one way to do tarot the only thing that we should all have in common is the intention make sure that our intentions are pure you know not trying to harm people not trying to promise things not telling people what to do i think that the intention is what matters the most but when it comes to really how we do spirituality how we work with tarot it's personal so yeah be careful sometimes a person's opinion it can really stay with you it can kind of change who you are because you believe that's the truth and you forget your truth you know and the emperor is a lot about that when I say that the emperor is about taking up space, it's about saying, you know what? Th that person's truth is not my truth. I don't want to live my life following another person's, you know, fake rule. Um, stupid rule, I would say. So there's something here about reclaiming your power. I feel like the emperor is, is very much about that. Like, okay, have I been doing things a certain way because I hurt other people? say I was supposed to live my life that way or I was supposed to do my practice a certain way or work a certain way, be a certain way in relationships also. That's a big thing, you know, in your relationship, either with a romantic partner or your friends, family. Are you showing up in a way that has been kind of, you know, programmed because you feel like, oh, this is how I should do it. This is how I should show up. Every relationship is different. Every relationship has their own rules. Same for every tarot reader. Every creative, you know, person. Everyone is different. And that is the beauty of being a human. That's the biggest gift that we have, guys. So why follow, you know, false rules? There are rules to follow in society and that's enough. That's already enough. So why do we create rules for ourselves? And this is something that's coming up very strongly right now. Um, and we have the King of Cups. This is so cool. Like King of Cups, you already know who you are. You are discovering more and more every day about you, but you already know. Uh, what do you value? What makes you feel good? And creating your own rules also with the kings and the tarot, especially king of cups, like creating your own rules around relationship. Why would I show up with my partner in the same way that my friend does? In the same way that I like, you know, I see couples do things online. Who cares? It's not going to work. So how can we create new rules for ourselves? And how can we make sure that we're not living our lives following false rules that we made up or that society made up for us? You know, a little bit like beauty standards, 
but like emotional standards is what I'm getting here. So yeah, there's something, there's something beneath the surface that is trying to come up because it's all very kind of specific what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, creating your own emotional rules in relationship at work. Again, when you do something creative, are you putting your own signature on the things that you do? Are you showing up in a way that is authentic? You know, authenticity is freaking rare these days. Everyone looks the same online. Everyone wants to look a certain way. I feel like it's it's getting a little bit better, maybe because I'm not on Instagram. So I'm not, you know, I haven't been on Instagram for like a year and a half. So I don't see as many <laughs> like shitty things. But there's something here about that. Um reprogramming ourselves you know technology and again society's rules and there's so many beautiful things that can come out of that but can we let go of what isn't working slowly but surely you know we're not going to wake up one day and snap our fingers we've been programmed a certain way um we are surrounded by so many, uh, you know, ugly things, fake news, fake things. It's like, okay, but what is my reality? Who am I really? And this is something that we are on a road to discovering is what I'm sensing with this reading. The moon is a lot about that. It's not a straight line. It's non-linear. This journey of self-love, this journey of like figuring out who you are, what you want, where you're going, because there's so much outside influence. Okay, <laughs> we have the Empress here and the fabulous Three of Cups. So three, three, I love that. Um, you know, the number three for me, the angel number three, 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 or just the number three is like, a very clear signs from our guides. And this is how I experience it. It might not be the same for you and that's totally valid. But this number to me is really about knowing that it's okay to not know, you know? It's okay that you cannot predict the future. It's okay that you don't have this clear path um, planned in front of you. It's totally fine. And can you trust that there's beauty on the way? There's celebration that you deserve receiving. The Empress is so much about our ability and some, sometimes inability to receive love, abundance, um, which is normal. We are all humans and, and humans are uncomfortable receiving, you know? So there's something here about that, you know, three of cups in the hermetic version is the Lord of abundance, abundance in all forms. It's not just about cash. It's not just about what you have, what you possess. It's everything. It's also how you feel, who you surround yourself with, um, how you choose to show up in the world, how you choose to, again, open yourself up to receive, knowing that you deserve that. Um, and it all comes back to the emperor, you know, taking up space. And the empress and the emperor, so close to each other in the reading is, is fabulous. It could definitely be talking about a power couple, about uh, your luck changing in a specific relationship, romantic or not. But there's something here. The emperor is nothing without the empress. That I always felt since I started uh, reading tarot. It's like they need each other to be complete. For some people, it's going to be themselves. It's going to be the, the balance of feminine and masculine. It's going to be this you know, playing with that, getting to know those two sides. Um, and for others, it's really going to be about, you know, not the masculine and feminine at all, because tarot is not about gender, but really about uh, finding someone who adds beauty in your life. Not someone who completes you, but someone who adds beauty, fun, abundance, 
And I feel like this is a big theme here, finding abundance within us, noticing it within and all around us, and also in our relationship. Um, and knowing also your value, my friend, knowing that you are part of the abundance of someone else, um, which I don't even know if I can say that. It, it sounds a little bit weird, but it's true. Sometimes we have no idea that we are such a big part of a person's growth and happiness, you know? So give yourself that love. Give yourself that gentle, that gentle like pat on the back like, hey, you, I've been doing good. I've been trying my best. And that's the least I can do. That's the best I can do really trying my best in my relationship and my relationship with myself. Um, and again, knowing that I deserve love and abundance. Um, and we have the eight of pentacles. I like that because there's like so many major cards and the king of cups and the three of cups, six of cups. And now there's this moment of, hey, come back to earth, you know, <laughs> get your feet back on the ground with the eight of pentacles. Sorry, I, I feel like I said eight of cups, but eight of pentacles. Eight of pentacles is about showing up every day. You know, it's about every moment, every action, every time you show up to work, every time you show up in your relationship, every time you show love to yourself or you do a little act of kindness for others, for yourself. It's like, the accumulation of all the little things that you do. And it's a confirmation that you are transforming. This card really shows up in my practice to help me remember that I matter. I matter. My work matter. My, my words matter. My presence, my support, my love. Um, and of course, it doesn't matter just to everyone. But it does matter and I matter. And the little things that I do sometimes that I take for granted, the things that I'm proud of but I don't celebrate, you know, again, how you show up every day. Um, Eight of Pentacles says, again, it matters. There's a bigger picture. Everything you do works like an echo. Uh, it goes beyond the material. This is a card of Virgo. And that's why I feel like it's always going beyond the material. When I think about Virgo, I think about the hermit. I think about the lantern and the lantern shining a light through the material world. So sometimes we are very busy working, you know, trying to pay our bills, trying to make it work. It, it's not easy to navigate this world. It's not easy to, you know, make ends meet and just... um constantly have this feeling this never-ending feeling okay like i'm gonna have to work forever i'm gonna have to show up like can we celebrate ourselves can we honor that can we also look at the bigger picture and know that every step that we take every words that we say works like an echo and this is something i come back to a lot i used to talk a lot about that on patreon in, in the mystery readings I did weekly, that every smile is an echo, every word. Don't ever underestimate when you compliment someone, when you smile to someone, you know? Sometimes we are in our own little bubble. We walk on the street with our AirPods, you know, and we're just not looking around, not noticing the beauty, just doing our own thing. Especially in the past three years, it's been so easy to isolate ourselves and to feel like we're alone, but we're not, you know? Um, and it's not about preaching, you know, saying we're all together, we're all one, which is, is true in a sense, but it's really about knowing your power, the power of your words, of who you are, of, again, a smile. Um, and sometimes, you know, I feel like people... Are, I like, who cares? I'm the type of person who is always like so polite and uh, 
So I smile at everyone. I open the door for people. I'm, I'm like that extra client. If I go in a restaurant or a cafe, my friends are always like, how? How does that happen? Like everyone knows you in that restaurant and that cafe because I smile at people. If it feels aligned, I, I love to give compliments. I love to look people in the eyes and interact and have this, um, this moment of connection. And every time people are gonna come back and say, thank you so much. Like it really made me feel good that you said that about my hair, that you took the time to talk to me. Like people will remember and it will be contagious they will smile more to people they will compliment people and it's not about being fake you know you can tell when a compliment is fake but when it's real it can really again work as an echo so don't underestimate your power in every little moment which again the eight of pentacles is about that the accumulation of every little thing so i like that all such big cards surrounding the moon, surrounding uncertainty. And it's like, yeah, you show up every day, but you don't know necessarily why. And you know what? You're not supposed to know. You're not supposed to get the credit every time that you help someone. Every time that you make a difference in someone's life, you know, you will never know exactly the impact that you have. And it's not yours to hold, my friend. It, it does not belong to you. It should be done as like um, a, an act of self-love, an act of love. But it's not to get the credit. It's not something that you can count. And it's not something, again, that you're going to be aware of. But I think that by showing up in the world with, with love for others... It's just, it's helping you love yourself more. It's just, again, working as an echo and so much bigger than us. We have the temperance card here and the six of wands. I love that. So temperance is so much. I feel like I've been studying the temperance card very intensely in the past two, three months. Um, and I, I realized that this card is everything everything there's the energy of the sun there's the energy of Sagittarius it's a very lucky card especially seeing it with the six of wands it's an alignment between the mind the body the soul it's trusting that where we're going it might be unknown it might be a huge question mark in our mind and that's okay that's okay. It's not about the destination. It's not about it. It's about the journey. It's about the process. Um, and, you know, the temperance card, you can see on the traditional version, on this version, that the angel is playing with, with two cups. And it's like, it looks like a magic trick. But it just took so much practice. And that's the thing. You're not going to become a master at everything you do just overnight. You're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to trust. You're going to have to, like, like the angel does, dip their toe into the water. You're going to have to get vulnerable. I have 33, 33 on the clock as I'm saying that. Again, always a big sign that where we're going is exactly where we're meant to go, but we're not supposed to know. Because it's not about the destination. It's, it's really about how we show up in the process, on the journey. You know? Um, six of Wands, a massive card of celebration. Again, another six. Six is very connected to the lover's card. So it's not about just wanting success. It's not just about like, okay, I want to be victorious. I want to accomplish this and that. It's... How will I get there? How can I make sure that the road to get to my goals or the road to wherever I want to go is one of love, of respect, of co-creation, collaboration, openness, vulnerability. There's so much. And we cannot address thing, all things at once. We cannot just do everything and be perfect 
um, at everything we do, we have to be like the temperance angel and dip our toe and try. Your willingness, your intention is what matters the most. It's not how many times you won, how many this, how many subscribers, how many friends, how many... Nah, nah, nah. It's not about that, you know? Um, when you get to a point in your life where you look back, you're not going to celebrate all the times that you won, all the times that you were the best. You're going to remember feelings. Humans remember how we feel, how others make us feel. And that is like so important in everything you do. People will remember how you make them feel, not how you looked, not how cool you were. And this thing that you have, this thing that you possess, they will remember how you made them feel. This is just how humans are made. So there's this big lesson here. Are you careful with how you treat yourself, how you treat others? And knowing that, yeah, again, it's not about the destination. It's not about the quantity, the amount of money, how you look, how your, you know, how your body looks. It's how you make other feel and how you feel. And that's something that I've been journaling a lot about. You know, I used to journal a lot, a lot of, about like writing my goals and wanting a certain amount of followers, wanting a certain, a certain amount of money every month. And now every month, my priority is feeling good. What feels good? You know, two weeks ago, I paused my Patreon. I don't know if I'm going to go back. I knew in the moment that it felt good to say, okay, this is something I'm taking off my schedule. I want to focus on other things. And I really asked myself, what feels good right now? You know, and not focusing on, well, I have to do this. People are expecting this and um, I want more followers. I want more money. It's not about that. And I really feel like when we, again, treat ourselves with love, kindness, when we embody this soft, this beautiful energy, at the end of the day, we're always going to find a way to attract abundance. Abundance is going to be all around us and within us. And we're always going to make things work. Because we love ourselves. We want the best for ourselves. And look at that. I told you when I saw the temperance card, I knew. I knew it was a very lucky energy. This is a confirmation. Luck is on your side. So trust. You know, work with the moon energy. Work with... All the uncertainty and just try, try your best and know that again, luck is on your side. Abundance is within, it's all around you constantly. And I would say with the cards I'm seeing here, it could be an amazing time to start a new project. It could be an amazing time to dip your toe into something new. Ask this person to collaborate Ask this person out. Ask this person a question. Share, you know, reach out. Do the extra work, you know, take the extra step because there's a very lucky energy definitely all around us in this community. Uh, and this is just wrapping this up beautifully. I love the arrow of Sagittarius. I'm always asking myself, like, how can I embody the arrow? How can I take action? How can I embody this energy of pushing through fear and trusting that um, I will do my best and I will get exactly where I'm supposed to go? So yeah, I'm sending love, guys. Thank you so much for being here, for supporting my work, for interacting with me and being such a big part of, of my spiritual journey and just my life, really. I said this before and I mean it. You guys changed my life with this channel, with your words, your support. Um, this is all a collaboration. There's no this, there's no bird of Venus without you guys. You know, it's, it's a collaboration always. We are all intuitive. We are all doing this together 
And uh, yeah, again, remember that you have control over your life. It's not the cards. It's not me. It's you. I'm sending love, guys.